podcast. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. My name is Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, and around the world on the Exxon Broadcast Network and our growing family of broadcast affiliates and satellite distribution centers. Worldwide toll free 800 610 7035. Email exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And our main website at www.exoneradiotv.com. My guest this hour is Rosalie Strawcutter, and her website is www.readingsbyrosalie.com. Now, Rosalie considers herself a clairvoyant medium and uh, defines her gifts in the following fashion she is clairsentient, clairaudient, clairalians. Um, and a couple of other Claire's that I've never heard before. Uh, Rosalie, why don't you come on and tell us about your gifts? Um, hi, Rob. Oh, hi yes. there. Uh, this is a wonderful night for me. But, oh. um, yes, I am a Claire. I, I include everything in that clairvoyant. Uh, Claire Gustin is the is ability to taste things. Oh, okay. And uh, Claire Cognizance is just allowing me to know things. And as a child, the first thing I knew... I was three years old, and I knew my father was leaving us, and my father gave me a letter to give to my mother, oh, gosh. and I knew that letter was going to make my mother cry. And looking back at these things over the years, um, someone later in life told me that mm-hmm. I was this, um, and I was 22 before I found out what exactly I was, because I was just this. I just knew things. I just knew and my grandmother called it the knowing so at three years old you had your first taste uh, of your gift and yeah. um and how did it how has this gift changed your life um it has changed my life so immensely in the fact that i it has grown into allowing me to accept spirit mm-hmm. to come in and talk with people um they speak through me uh, via messages with, um, I see pictures, I'll, sometimes I'll see a whole person, sometimes they'll show me something specific, but little things they bring me, very seldom do I see an entire person, but there are times when I do. Um, and I'm, I deliver these messages for the people, and it's all out of love. And when I started accepting spirit coming in through love is when I started actually working more mm-hmm. in this in this field. I understand that you're a very blunt lady. I can be at times. I mm. don't mean to be, but sometimes spirit pushes me. And it's kind of like if you've ever seen John Edwards where he pushes someone and pushes and yeah. pushes. And, no, I hear your sister. I hear your sister. They come in like that, and they really do push. They want... I had a gentleman. Um, I, I was trying to get his father... And I says, you know, I'm not getting your father, but I'm getting your brother. He says, I don't have a brother in spirit. I said, yes, you do. And he says, no, I don't. I says, you do. Wow. And he said, I don't. <laughs> we kept going until I finally said he, he, he died before you were born, but he is your brother. And then he, you know, mm-hmm. when you're pushing someone like that, they really have to take a breath and, and collect themselves. And then they do remember a story of mother losing a son and, um, this brother was the one coming through giving messages, and it was really awesome. So uh, the movie goes with Whoopi Goldberg and Patrick Swayze. How close to real was the depiction of, of Whoopi Goldberg as the medium? Um, <laughs> um, I would say that there are some people quite like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm not quite that animated. Right. Uh, and I don't have spirit... Um, 
handing me things, although I do have a good story about how you can connect with your people. Really? Yes. Is it hard um, for you, is it hard for you to, to connect to the other side? Not at all. Fascinating. Not anymore. Um, I, I do it so often that it's, it's not hard at all. And anybody can do it. Anybody can really? talk to their families, members in spirit, and mm-hmm. they can ask them to bring them things to let them know they're around and they will bring it. You know, I've often wondered, we've got to go to a commercial break very shortly, but I've often wondered the people that we see talking to themselves, I've often wondered if they are talking to people that we just can't see. So society says, well, if you're talking to yourself, you must be a little woo-woo. But I often wonder that, uh, Rosalie, are we misinterpreting our surroundings because some of us are so naive that we just can't picture the other side? Um, yes, I believe that's a, a quite accurate description. Um, I do feel that there's a certain part in your head that mm-hmm. you could tune into, and when you talk to spirit, when spirit's talking to you, you will feel it. When you, I, I have just had a. a Whoops, we've got to I, take we've got to take our, our first break, dear. Please stand by. Exo Nation. Rosalie Strawcutter is my guest. Her website is www.readingsbyrosalie.com, and we'll be back. Breathing heavy in your ear, Ron. Exonation, uh, Rosalie Strawcutter is my special guest this hour. Readings by Rosemary. I'm sorry, readings by Rosalie.com. That's www.readingsbyrosalie.com. And I don't know, Exonation, if you can feel it, but this lady has an energy. That that is just awesome, and and Rosalie, thanks very much for coming on the show tonight. But I have to ask you something: What has been your most profound reading that you've done, or your um, most profound story? My okay, I'll tell you what happened. My after my sister passed, oh, I'm um, sorry. my sister and I had a very strong connection. I took care of her mm-hmm. um, while she, she was terminal patient. And um, when I came home after she passed, I was napping on my couch just a couple days later. And uh, I woke up, and I was sleeping on the side, so I had my arm up. Mm -hmm. And I saw this bright light, and I was watching it. I'm like, oh, my goodness, sun's coming in through the blind. But it was the wrong direction. So I just watched it. It got larger and larger. And it, it was a bright light of about three feet. And then it opened up, and a hand came out of it. And it started coming to me. It had a robe attached to it. Mm-hmm. And it came within an inch from my finger. And I said, don't touch me. And it all pulled back in. And I said, oh, my gosh, what an idiot. Why did you say don't touch me? I knew it wasn't my sister's hand Mm -hmm. because I know what my sister's hand looks like. But I also know it absolutely happened because I was black and blue from all the pinching. Oh, my gosh. My arm. Um, I said, no, I'm awake for this. I'm awake. This is happening. That was the most profound thing I have ever experienced in my entire life. And I hope to experience it again. I have another terminal sister. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yes. I know where they're going, so I'm not as uh, I'm not as terminal about it. If you don't mind me asking, and if you don't feel like asking this, I, answering this, I will certainly understand. What happens to someone when they pass over? Where do they go? It depends, Rom, because there are. It depends on who's holding them here. Mm. I they leave their body. Someone comes over to collect them. They leave their body, and at that time they choose to either go with the person who's coming to collect them or they meander around and and visit people they've wanted to see. You know, if someone's not there, um, you've heard of, uh, I'm sure over the years, you've heard of someone who passed um, 500 miles away. Someone looks and they see that person materialize in front of them, and then poof, they're gone. So. They go to visit whoever they want to see before they actually leave. 
um, with the person who came to collect them. And I do feel that they go up into a higher energy. When my father passed, I got there late, and our family uh, pretty much, we our people leave at home and they, they stay at home. We don't put them in funeral homes and stuff like that. So I arrived late, and I, the minute I got there, I touched my dad's arm, and it was like four walls just went down, and I went flying up into the universe. And I could see my dad's spirit energy going with a group of, it, it appeared to be stars. Hmm. And I, I said, Dad, wait. And he said, don't follow me. You have to go back. Don't follow me. And I came back, and I looked at my sister, and she says, what just happened? I said, I'll tell you later. Because my family, my extended family, um, are just now finding out what I do. Uh, they didn't know I was like this because my father never allowed it to happen. He n- never allowed my extended family to know about this. Why not? Um, it was uncomfortable for him. I think a lot of things um, that I said and knew mm-hmm. were things involving him. I see. How do you deal with the, 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 the great work that you do? I'm, I'm not trying to take anything away from what you do. I have a lot of respect for it. How do you deal with it as, as Rosalie? You know, you deal with people who are on this side who who are grieving the loss of the loved one that you're communicating with on the other side and and here you are Rosalie a conduit right how do, how do you deal with the with the emotion that you must go through when you do this mediumship well for a long time it was very heavy energy on me mm-hmm. uh, I couldn't control the spirit leaving They would just hang around. And uh, finally, I just, um, I went and got some holy water. I said, I have to correct this somehow uh, because my energy was exhausting. I I would sleep and sleep and sleep. I was just too tired. So, and I would have to schedule readings out a week week away because the energy was so heavy. And since I started actually blessing everything, telling spirit that they had to go with their people, they cannot stay at my home. They, I welcomed them in. They came in love and light, and they need to go home. And after that, then it's been great. How important are your religious beliefs in the wonderful work you do? I think it's very important. Um, I was raised, um, you know, I think we were raised with the basic Ten Commandments mm-hmm. um, that stick in your head. But they, the main thing, they've... One of the commandments should be, thou shall love, because that is the biggest gift that we all have, the gift of love. Mm -hmm. And when we're in that gift of love, it's what spirit sees. That's what they see, and that's where they are. Um, So being being raised in the manner that I was with, um, my father sent me to many churches because of the things I would say to him. Uh, so my sister had to go with me, unfortunately, for her. Um, but I believe in God. I've always had a firm belief in God and Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And I feel that believing the belief that he has given me this gift to help others is what, sh- is what actually drives me forward with it. You know, you, you said that love should be in the Ten Commandments. But I think that love is the entire message throughout the Bible, whether it's the creation and God said, let us create man in our image. To me, that is the first sign of love in the Bible. Then you have the story of Adam and Eve, which could be looked at as a Romeo and Juliet story. Then you have the love that he showed for the Hebrews taking them out of out of Egypt, the love of giving the world his only son. Yeah. So I understand where you're coming from, and I, uh, I respect it, and I appreciate it. But I'm sure being a medium isn't always serious for you. There must be some funny stories that you can share with us. 
Oh, there are a lot of hilarious stories, but there is one that truly sticks in my head. <laughs> and whenever somebody asks about it, yeah. uh, I, I tend to bring it back. Um, there was this very large gentleman. He was about 6'5". Um, and it's hard for me, you know, men, it's hard for men to cry. So when there's a man crying in front of me, I do absolutely everything I can to change that around. Um, and so does spirit. Mm-hmm. So this man was crying. And I was, I felt so bad for him. I went over and held him. And actually, this was the one where I was referencing that brother before. Oh, right. Um, when I said he had a brother in spirit, he said he didn't. I said he did. Mm-hmm. And when he finally recognized that he did have a brother in spirit, it was his brother that was giving me all the information. Um, and he was concerned his father had hung himself, and he was concerned that his father was in hell. And I said, no, no, he's not, um, but I cannot get him right now, but your brother is speaking on his behalf. So he was sobbing and sobbing, and I asked his brother to send me an image or something that I can turn this around with, mm-hmm. and he sent me a picture in my mind of this little boy standing in front of the bathroom, and he had to go so bad <laughs> Underwear from behind pulled out, pulled out, pulled out. And as I was describing it to him, he says, oh, my God, I remember that. <laughs> he started laughing. He says, I had to go to the bathroom so bad. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But it was so, so funny, and it, it brought him right around, and I was so happy for him. And I thanked Spirit for that, that funny message. <laughs> Do you speak to one spirit or a variety of spirits, or is your spirit actually your spirit guide? I speak to a variety of spirits. Hopefully, they're all the people that, um, I don't want to say hopefully, they usually are, mm-hmm. um, the people who who um, the person in front of me is looking okay. for. Um, although sometimes it's not. Um, and my guides come through to help um, people get a better connection with me, mm-hmm. or if I've noticed that people who have had a very strict upbringing where what I do would be absolutely taboo, I send my spirit guides to talk to them mm-hmm. to get the connection better, to let them know that I'm they're here, they are here, because right. their person in the family that they love is here, and we're going to make this communication. So, and also my guides, um, they will help me with, um, if someone speaks a different language, sometimes they'll interpret language for me. Gotcha. Is there any one message that Spirit would like to share with us tonight? They sure do. They want to, Spirit wants to know and wants the person, wants everybody to know that no matter what happened here on the earth plane Mm -hmm. when they were here, it could be the, the nasty fights, the arguments, the, the last-minute things, you not being there when they pass. That's all gone when they cross over, and it's all about love. So if you were, like my, I'll use my father as an example because I do a lot. Um, he left us a lot uh, growing up. He was a very confused man. Um, he drank a lot, and he beat us. We actually had what we lovingly termed as ass-whipping Wednesdays. We would just get beat for no reason whatsoever other than it was Wednesday. My Lord. But uh, with him gone, now he wants to make up for how he treated us, and he will do anything he can. All right, listen, I, 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 hate, I hate to interrupt you. I, I really do, but I have to go for a news break. Sure. When we come back, I'd love to hear the, the rest of the story. So please stand by, Rosalie. Great having you with us, and thank you so much for sharing from your heart. Exonation Rosalie Strawcutter is my special guest, www.readingsbyrosalie.com. And we'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as the Exxon continues with yours truly, Rob McConnell, from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. I'll be back with Rosalie. Exonation, my very special guest this hour is Rosalie Strawcutter. Her website is readingsbyrosalie.com. 
com. And Rosalie, I, I was so sorry to interrupt you when you were giving us the message from Spirit, but please continue. Okay, well, I, I believe I was talking about uh, using my dad as an example. Yes, and your, uh, your whip-ass Wednesdays. Yes. <laughs> but he, he now comes back to let me know things, and he comes back uh, to help me understand things. Uh, for instance, when my, uh, my sister who had brain cancer, when she was actually diagnosed with brain mm-hmm. cancer, um, he was standing outside my bedroom door. And I looked and saw him there, and I'm like, oh, what's going on? And so I called my sister, and she told me she had brain cancer. Her cancer had gone to her brain at the time. Oh. So my father has been around to let me know of, of things that are going on, and I just had an event recently that I went to. When I was heading out the door, I heard him say, you'll do fine, kiddo. And I said, thanks, Dan. <laughs> so they do want you to know that they will help you whatever way they can help you um, get to where you need to go in your advancement of your career, your life, your loves. Whatever they can do to help, all you have to do is ask them. And once you ask them, listen. That's exactly right. Yeah. Where do angels fit into the entire scenario when it comes to spirits, guides, angels are they one and the same or do each one of those have a specific uh function within our lives i believe they do have specific functions it's kind of like a hierarchy Mm -hmm. of um i am not an angel expert whatsoever in fact this is very new to me and um i with my gifts when something comes in I, I look at it, I said, this is confusing, I don't know what, what this is, I don't understand it. I'll ask my guides, and apparently I see angels as a shining globe off to the side of someone's head. Ah. And much like if you took a photograph and you saw orbs. Yeah. Interesting. That's how I see angels. So with the angel spirit... Um, I've never dealt much with them. It is all new to me, but I know they have a place in our lives. I'm certainly sure that they're uh, with us. How is How are listeners tonight able to talk to their spirit guides or their spirits, their relatives? You know, one of the things, uh, the spirit always wants you to know that they are there. Mm-hmm. I had a friend of mine who's very logistic. She's very, uh, she always wants whatever she asks for to be there. You know, Mm -hmm. it has to be that thing. She cannot go off her own, get out of her own way to see her nose in spite of her face. But um, I had told her one time, ask your your mom for a sign that she's around you and if this is going to be a good move for you. And at the time, she was considering a move to North Carolina. I was with her on the trip. And so she asked her mother for a white feather. Now, she expected this white feather to drop out of thin air and land on her feet or her nose Mm -hmm. or fingertips, whatever. Um, But we actually, during this trip, went to a little farm where there happened to be a whole pen of chickens with white feathers. I said, there's your mother's answer right there. (laughs) That's your white feathers. She goes, oh, my gosh. I wouldn't have even thought of that because I was looking for a Mm. white feather. How do you do uh, readings over the telephone? Because I I know I'm sure that you're going to get uh, inquiries from our listeners. So how does it work over the telephone? I can understand it if somebody is sitting in front of you, you you see the person, you're able to, you know, to see them, their 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 glows as as we discuss them. But over the okay. telephone, how does it work? Um, it's all about energy. And you know when I whenever I don't know something, mm-hmm. I have to try it. I have a scientific mind too, so both sides of my brain work to try to figure out. Yeah. Okay. Is this? <laughs> but uh, so when uh, someone asked me if I did it over the phone, and I think at the time it was um, we had um, 
that psychic Cleo that would give readings over the phone, I believe it was. Somebody says, can you do that over the phone? I says, you know, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so I had my sister in another state, my nephew in another state. I asked them both. I said, will you send me each five people? And the criteria for them needs to be they cannot afford to get a reading. That's priority one. Two, they are in serious financial trouble looking for a job. They need help. Mm -hmm. That would be two. Uh, three, they have someone they love that died and they're just not getting past it. And uh, so both of those people came up with five names and numbers. I set times for um, an interview with each of them. And while I was doing the reading, I had a checklist. I was writing things down. Oh, I was right on that, right on that. And it is the energy. The energy is the same if I was talking over the phone as if somebody was sitting in front of me. Wow. Um, and it is all about energy. And I was surprised. I surprised myself, Rob, every single day. Some of the things that come out of my mouth is just, I think, amazing. I'm like, where does that come from? My God. God. Well, that's where it comes from, I'm sure. What about reincarnation? What is your what is your opinion on the the possibility of life after life? Well, I I, I never really had an opinion on that either mm -hmm. until all of a sudden spirit would come in and say things like, "I'm on level one. Hmm. I'm on level five. I'm on level six. Level three. I'm like, what on earth are you people talking about? What are these levels? Mm -hmm. And I'm not so certain it's... Uh, I thought it was levels of, of reincarnation. You know, they were on their third life or their fifth life right. time. Um, but now I'm not so sure because they stopped sending it to me now. But back then I had it in my head, well, they must be talking about reincarnation. But then I'm also thinking, well, maybe they're talking about their own progression spiritually on the other side. Could be. Why I was asking you was, let's say somebody goes to see you, and mm -hmm. they ask you to connect with, let's say, their grandmother. But their grandmother has been reincarnated. What happens in that case? Oh, wow. Um <laughs> That actually happened. My girlfriend's father, mm -hmm. um, I couldn't get him. I said, you know, I can't get your dad. I said, he can bring you things, but I cannot get him to talk to him, and I really don't know why. I do not know why. I said, maybe he must be at a level I cannot reach. I have no idea how many levels to heaven there are yeah. at the time they were showing me these levels. And I said, he must be at a level that I cannot reach. And I would try to elevate myself higher and higher to try to get him, mm -hmm. and I could not. And then one day, her sister, and she had not told her sister about this, but her sister told her, I had a dream that Dad is now a little boy in Chillicothe. <laughs> And so, hey, I believe her, yeah. <laughs> her father, because I could not get him. But it, that doesn't mean that he still can't pop in and, you know, his, sure. it, not all of his energy is gone. I've got to ask you, how do you find, with all the people who have passed on since the beginning of time that, that we can fathom, how are you able to find that one spirit that you're looking for? They find me. Ah. They come, they, I connect with the person. When I am doing a reading, mm -hmm. I connect with the person's energy. I bring them into my energy, and they come. They see their person's love, and they come to it. Now, prior to that, I pray like crazy. I, I pray, and I bless my home, mm -hmm. and I ask spirit. Uh, to allow their family members to come through for them. And I also ask for an excellent reading. So when they do come through, they already, some of them who are <clears throat> excuse me, in tune mm -hmm. already pick up on my vibration of their family. Because I'll walk around saying the person's first name. I only go on first name basis. And uh, so all I know about a person is they have a first name. And so I'll pray and I'll ask that their spirit uh, family come in 
uh, for uh, Rob McConnell. Well, not Rob McConnell. We'll just say Rob, uh, who is coming here at 10 o'clock. And people will start, you know, at some point in time, they'll start arriving. I'll hear, like, I have black hair or I hear I'm her sister. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'll hear little things before they get there. Fascinating. How do you protect yourself from the evil that exists in the spirit world? How do you protect yourself that when you're when you're doing a a mediumship reading with with a with a spirit that is communicating through you to their loved one on this side, how do you stop a malevolent spirit from using trickery to come across? Um, I actually have never had that happen. I, I pray, mm -hmm. like I said, I ask my people in spirit to guard and protect each and every corner of my house and not allow any negative energy that would be causing harm for the person coming for the reading mm -hmm. to come into my house. Now, I've had people, before I used to have the blinds open, and someone would say, did you, did you see that? I'm like, what? And they'd say, I saw something black. I keep seeing something black going by. Mm -hmm. And I would say, uh, yeah, well, that, that energy is not allowed in here. So that's why they keep going by the windows. They're not allowed in here. But I, then I started closing blinds. But they're not allowed in here. I've never had them in. They're not allowed. Having communicated with many on the other side, have you ever asked them if there is such a thing as a life review? Um, I have. I, well, actually, one told me um, about his life review. He had taken his own life, mm -hmm. and he had said to me that he had his life review and, and then ended up in atonement. Now, I thought, okay, you ended up in atonement. Now, this is two words I hear, atonement and limbo. And I always hear those two words, atonement, limbo. When I cannot get somebody or they have just come out of, they'll say, I just came out of atonement mm. or I just came out of limbo. And I'm like, well, what are you talking about? And one spirit actually told me that he, he was a horrible person. He had, when he passed over and finally went to where he was supposed to be, he had a life review. He, he showed it to me like, um, like half of a huge ball. It was like cut in half, but it was big, like a big beach ball cut in half. Mm -hmm. And um, he, sh he looked in it, and he could see all the things he had done in his lifetime that were bad. And then he had to make the decision as to what he was going to do about it. And that's how he showed me. And I've never heard anything else from it or about it. But that, that, I thought, wow, that's, that's really intriguing. Now, are, nobody else has showed me, and I've asked, but nobody else has said anything. Do you find that as time progresses and society gets more strange each and every day, there's more chaos in the world, that the questions that are being asked to the other side are changing or becoming different from then, let's say, three, four years ago? Um. Actually, no, because uh, most people still want to know that their loved ones are around. Mm -hmm. And they still want to, you know, they still miss them. They still have, um, you know, love for them sure. and they still are looking for signs of them. So most of the people come to me uh, when they're addressing spirit. They want to know, I hate to say this sometimes, it's where is the money? Because... Um, I've had that happen so many times where people pass, yeah. you don't know where their documents are. I see. And I will have um, people show me where their documents are. And, um, but they, they do want to connect with their people, and it's all, all through their love energy. You know, I can tell by talking to you these past 40 minutes that you're a very sensitive person and that you take great pride in the work you do, and that when somebody comes to you for a reading, you hold their heart in your hand. What's it like when a mother comes to you to communicate, or a mother or father come to you to communicate with a child on the other side? Oh my God, Rob, that just happened. Are you psychic? <laughs> 
think they literally happened last week. Um, I mean, it's happened before, but recently this one did. A a mom came, and she had a 16-year-old son that took his own life. And it was so traumatic, and he, he did it in her bedroom. Oh, God. It, and the youngest brother saw it. Uh, it. It was just a horrible thing. And um, I let her, I mean, he, the kid, though, came through with such love and energy and he did tell me that this was because of his prescription medication for depression. That's what he told me, that this happened because a direct result of his prescription medication for depression. You and I have to take our final break. Please stand by. Great having you with us, Rosalie. Exonation Rosalie Strawcutter is our special guest. Her website is readings by Rosalie. Dot com. That's www.readingsbyrosalie.com. And Rosalie and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as we wrap up this hour here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Once again, Exxon Nation, if you have any concerns, any questions about Ebola, if you're in the United States, contact the Center for Disease Control. Their website is cdc.gov. And in Canada, Contact Health and Welfare Canada. And you can always go to your local emergency center if you have any questions, doubts, or if you believe that you've been in contact with someone. Don't go away. We'll be back on the other side of this break. Welcome back, everyone. As you know, I have an online petition at www.stopebolapetition.com. I am petitioning the Canadian government, the Canadian Prime Minister, Stephen Harper, the Minister of Public Safety, Stephen Blaney, as well as members of Parliament. I want people who are trying to get into Canada, who have visited any of the hot zones in Africa where Ebola might be, or is denied access into Canada, denied entrance. Now, I'm, I'm talking about first-time visitors. I'm talking about returning visitors. I'm talking about returning Canadians. Keep them out until Ebola is eradicated. We need to protect ourselves. We need to protect our citizens. We need to protect our economy. We need to protect our health care workers. And in my opinion, this is the only way we can do it. Once again, the website is www.stopebolapetition.com. Rosalie Strawcutter is my guest. Rosalie, I must tell you, I've thoroughly enjoyed having you with us for this hour. What is your final message that you would like to tell people around the world about spirit, about the work you do, and any other messages that spirit may have for us? You know, I want people to understand that spirit does want them to know that they are around and that sometimes like even moving things, when you put things down and you go back and it's gone and you're like, what did I do with that? You're not losing your mind most of the time. It's one of your spirit pranksters letting you know that they're around. Your family has a great sense of humor and they do come back. I, I'm not saying they're around you all the time. Mm-hmm. They come in and out. And um, in my particular case, I have a nephew that steals my tweezers. I keep my <laughs> tweezers in a place. They're there all the time. Uh-huh. And when they're gone, I know he's there. And I'm like, all right, put them back. <laughs> I need my tweezers. <laughs> my goodness. If someone would like to contact you for a one-on-one consultation, whether in person or by phone, What's the best way to proceed? Uh, they can uh, go through my website. I'm set up with uh, ClickBook. You can order and pay and set mm-hmm. your appointment time. Um, it does book out 24 hours in advance. So if you called me and you wanted a reading today, I couldn't give you one today I would because it schedules for the following day 24 hours ahead. One one quick question before we have to say so long. When you're out shopping or if you're at the movie, the airport, a train station, do spirits try to communicate with you to get a message across to somebody that you're in the vicinity with? Happened twice. 
Wow. I, I turn it off because I, I like to live a normal life. Mm -hmm. But actually, um, a couple months ago, I was in a restaurant in Cincinnati, and uh, this young lady, the waitress, I was looking at her. I could see her grandmother was coming through. I was trying to ignore her. And the, the woman kept trying to come through. And as the girl walked by me at one point, the grandmother said, look at this. And I looked, and, sh and on the girl's face, I could see that her eyes were black and blue, and she was swelling up. Oh, gosh. And I said, oh, my gosh, okay. So I gave the girl the communication. I, said to, I asked her, uh, do you have a boyfriend who's about six foot something and very muscular with dark hair? And she said, yes, I do. And I, and I told her who I was, introduced myself, told her who I was, told her what I was seeing, and that her grandmother had brought me this message as a warning and asked that she break up with this man because he was going to beat her up. Fascinating. Rosalie, we have to say so long for tonight. I'd love to have you back on in the future, my dear. So until then, thank you so much for joining us. Take care of yourself and keep the great work up. Love to you, Rob. I loved it. Thank you so much for inviting me. My great pleasure. Exo Nation, Rosalie Strawcutter has been our guest this hour. Once again, if you'd like to contact Rosalie for a one-on-one, -on -one, readings by Rosalie. Dot com. I'll be back on the other side of the news at six and a half minutes past the top of the hour as the Exxon continues with yours truly, Rob McConnell, from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. <laughs> <laughs>